our today's topic of discussion is basal nuclei so what are basal nuclei basically these are large masses of gray matter situated within white core of each cerebral hemisphere they form essential constituents of extra pyramidal system it is more commonly or widely regarded as basal ganglia but basal ganglia is a misnomer that term is misnomer it should be correctly called as a basal nuclei anatomically the basal nuclei include corpus striatum claustrum and amygdaloid body but functionally basal nuclei also includes subthalamus substantia nigra and red nucleus in this diagram here is thalamus these are the parts of caudate nucleus here is the lentiform nucleus this portion is internal capsule here is claustrum and this one is external capsule so as you can see that corpus striatum is situated lateral to the thalamus topographically corpus striatum is divided into caudate nucleus and lentiform nucleus but antero inferior ends of this nuclei are connected by bands of gray matter across the anterior limb of internal capsule you can see these bands over here these bands give it a striated appearance that's why it is known as corpus striatum lentiform nucleus is having two parts the lateral part is darker and it is known as putamen whereas medial part is somewhat paler which is known as globus pallidus phylogenetically corpus striatum forms two distinct functional units paleostriatum and neostriatum the globus pallidus forms the paleostriatum whereas caudate nucleus and putamen forms the neostriatum paleostriatum is also known as pallidum as well as neostriatum is also known as striatum striatum is large, largely afferent whereas pallidum is mainly efferent so in corpus striatum till now we have learned its location its topographical divisions why it is named as corpus striatum its phylogenetically functional units which one is afferent and which one is efferent we will now discuss in detail regarding caudate nucleus as you can see caudate nucleus is a large comma shaped mass of gray matter which surrounds the thalamus and it itself is surrounded by lateral ventricle the rounded anterior part in front of interventricular foramen is called as head head gradually tapers in caudal direction into the body and then into the tail anteriorly tail merges with almond shaped mass of gray matter known as amygdaloid body as you can see head is large and rounded it forms the floor and lateral wall of this anterior horn of lateral ventricle in the lateral ventricle this one is anterior horn this one is central part or body this one is posterior horn 
and this one is inferior hole. As we have seen previously that the band of grey matter connects the head to the putamen across anterior limb of internal capsule. Body is long and narrow whereas tail is long and slender. The body forms floor of the central part of lateral ventricle and tail forms the roof of inferior horn of lateral ventricle. Body is separated from thalamus by stria terminalis and thalamostriate veins. Tail terminates anteriorly into the amygdaloid body. So having learned the caudate nucleus, we will now learn the details of lentiform nucleus. Lentiform nucleus is a lens shape or a biconvex mass of grey matter. In horizontal section of cerebrum you can see this lentiform nucleus forms the lateral boundary of this structure known as internal capsule. In horizontal section it appears wedge shaped with convex base directed laterally. Lentiform nucleus is having three surfaces in two parts. The three surfaces are the lateral surface, medial surface and inferior surface. The lateral surface is related with a thin sheet of white matter known as external capsule. The second thing lateral surface is grooved by lateral striate arteries branches from the middle cerebral arteries. The medial surface is related with the limb and genu of the internal capsule. whereas inferior surface is related with sublentiform part of internal capsule. There are two parts of lentiform nucleus putamen and globus pallidus. A thin sheet of white matter known as external medullary lamina divides lentiform nucleus into the lateral part known as putamen and medial part known as globus pallidus. The putamen is relatively large. It appears dark due to densely packed small size cells. Whereas globus pallidus is comparatively smaller and medially located. It appears pale due to loosely arranged large size cells. As you can see over here, another thin sheet of white matter which is known as internal medullary lamina divides the put a globus pallidus into lateral and medial parts. We will now discuss the connections of basal ganglia. The coded nucleus and putamen receives the afferent whereas efferent goes from the globus pallidus. So caudate nucleus and putamen is the receiving part and fibers from the globus pallidus will form the output. The afferent fibers are corticostriate fibers, thalamostriate fibers and nigrostriate fibers. Corticostriate fibers arising from the various areas of the cerebral cortex and travel through to the coded nucleus as well as putamen. Thalamostriate fibers arise from mediodorsal, intralaminar, 
and midline nuclei of thalamus from here they mainly go to the coded nucleus and some fibers goes to the putamen nigrostriate fibers arise from the substantia nigra they mainly go to the putamen and some fibers goes to the coded nucleus the efferents from the striatum mostly goes to the globus pallidus whereas some efferent goes to the substantia nigra so ultimately globus pallidus forms the final output from the corpus striatum fibers from the globus pallidus mainly goes to the thalamus ventrolateral and ventro anterior nuclei of thalamus these fibers mainly forms two fasciculi the fasciculus lenticularis which traverses via internal capsule and the second one is ensa lenticularis which traverses the posterior limb of internal capsule now fasciculus lenticularis and ensa lenticularis both of these join with the dentato rubro thalamic tract and they, these three fasciculus lenticularis entel ensa lenticular ensa lenticularis and dentato rubro thalamic tract together form the thalamic fasciculus which ultimately projects into the ventrolateral and ventro anterior nuclei of thalamus from the thalamus these fibers ultimately project to the motor and premotor areas of cerebral cortex the reciprocal connection between globus pallidus and subthalamic nucleus forms another fasciculus known as subthalamic fasciculus some of the output or efferents from globus pallidus will also go to the substantia nigra so ultimately how the basal nuclei functions information regarding thoughts of any activity goes from cerebrum substantia nigra and thalamus to the corpus striatum in the corpus striatum there will be integration of this information and that integrated information will go to the globus pallidus from the globus pallidus that information will go mainly to the thalamus and substantia nigra from thalamus that information will go to the motor and premotor areas of cerebral cortex and ultimately this areas of cerebral cortex will control the movement via corticospinal and corticonuclear tracts corpus striatum mainly controls automatic associated movements like swinging of, of arms during walking as well as it will also help in smooth performance of skillful voluntary activities